Good morning, everybody. Good morning to all the Women Shine viewers. On the series of our Women Shine Live Talks, today we have with us a very special guest. Before introducing her, I would like to tell you what the day is special, like what is the special about this day. Today is World Side Day. It is, the day is being celebrated or what, or not just celebrated, it is being observed to create awareness about keeping your eyes safe and healthy and also providing help to people who are blind or have issues in their eyes. The theme for this year is Love Your Eyes. Today we have with us Shalini Khanna, Director of National Association for Blind. Uh, I would like to welcome you, ma'am, to Women Shine. Thank you. Hi. Hello. So firstly, I would want to ask you, what is this organization all about and when did you join them? So uh, National Association for the Blind India is a 62 year old organization having started in Mumbai originally and um, slowly they opened chapters in all over the country about 22 state branches they have. But um, our unit, uh, the unit that I started actually uh, is Center for Blind Women and Disability Studies in Delhi which is a totally dedicated unit for blind, for rehabilitation of blind women and girls in this country. And it's a center, it's a one of its kind center. There are no other uh, centers for blind women in the country that way. So uh, that's how it is. The organization got a premise donated in around uh, late 1990s. And uh, in 2002, uh, we had done a study called Status of Blind Women in India in year 2000. We finished in 2002. It was on a real life uh, sample size of about 500 women. We were supposed to go around all of the country to find out. I was the key coordinator of the study because I come from the area of market research. I was a qualitative market researcher before that. Okay. Just happened to volunteer my time in uh, a blind school in, in a branch of NAB call it NAB and it was a school branch and that's where the director of the school branch asked me to do this uh, status of blind women in India study and we saw some very very sad picture of blind women in the country at that time and uh, after that uh, NAB India the head office asked me if I would like to start something like a rehab vocational training center for blind women in Hoskhaz and Clave, New Delhi, where they have a premise related. Though I did not have a lot of idea, but since I had been working with blind children for four years, I um, thought I would like to maybe do something because I knew there was nothing like that in India. And I definitely had a sense of purpose in my life that early. I was, I was 29 in 2002. And I definitely wanted to have a life of purpose where, where I will do something which is important for the world. And uh, this was a just cause I felt when, when we went around to find out what was their status, we felt it was not very nice. I mean, blind girls were being married with sighted sisters to the same man in the country, in some regions, because parents didn't know what to do with them. And, uh, if they had sent the girls to residential schools to study after 12, they would again be confined at homes because the parents didn't know again what to do with this educated daughter in a whole village of uneducated people. They could not even marry her. They did, she didn't find a job. There were no scope of higher education for her at that time. There was too much to do. There was so much to do. And... You know, the vocational trainings at that time for blind people used to be chair caning and chalk making, which could not get you two square meals a day. So, uh, yes, with a vision of changing the face of blind women in the country, we started this center. We had a local board in Delhi and uh, that's how. That's actually wonderful and inspiring to like people to join the cause that the journey thing is important and help the people out in that specific area. So I would want to know what is the condition of blind 
women in India. I hope you must have encountered many such uh, cases as you just mentioned. If you want to touch upon that area. See, at that time when we opened the center, I just told you what the status was. It was worse than this also. The, the people who had daughters who had gone blind late in life or who were gone blind, they would not even tell their neighbors that they have a blind daughter because having a daughter and that too blind was to them like almost a reflection of their own karmas. They thought, you know, it was a stigma in the society. So where they, they would not want to send her out in the open on the on the road to do anything and residential school hai to waha par lenge. Is it okay if I break out in Hindi? Do you want me to or no? Let me know. No, no, you can always you can always choose your own language. Yes, no, so sure. I guess a lot of audience in India does understand Hindi better and is more comfortable. Yes, that's true. So uh parents ko lagta tha ki hum hamari beti agar blind hai to लोग रिश्तेदार हमारे बारे में बुरा सोचेंगे क्योंकि लड़की है ऊपर से दृष्टिहीन है सो दे वुड नॉट सेंड हर आउट बाहर सेफ्टी सिक्योरिटी का इतना कोई सिनेरियो नहीं है आज भी पर तब तो और ही बुरा था तो उसको बाहर निकालना उनको और मुश्किल लगता था लड़की को तो हमने जब सेंटर खोला आ, हमें यह बात मालूम थी कि वोकेशंस को ही नया शुरू करना पड़ेगा देश में ऐसी कोई एक्टिविटीज या ट्रेनिंग्स ही नहीं है जिससे उनको जॉब्स में डाला जा सके उनकी अपनी जो ब्रिंगिंग अप है या जो भी एजुकेशन है वो बहुत ज्यादा मॉडर्न नहीं थी और उनको जमाने के साथ चलाने के लिए वी हैड टू वर्क अ लॉट वी हैड टू वर्क वेरी हार्ड बिकॉज़ यू हैड टू मेक देम कंप्यूटर लिटरेट कंप्यूटर्स वर ऑन एट दैट टाइम एंड एवरीबॉडी नोस 2002 के बाद ऐसा इतना बड़ा बूम आया टेक्नोलॉजी का और वो बिल्कुल पीछे रह रहे थे दुनिया से बिकॉज सिखाने वाले कोई नहीं थे ऐसा थोड़े है कि वो सीख नहीं सकते थे उसके अलावा बहुत सारे अनएजुकेटेड लड़कियां थी आज भी 80 प्रतिशत ब्लाइंड लड़कियां अनएजुकेटेड हैं हमारे देश में करीबन 15 से 20 मिलियन ब्लाइंड लड़कियां हैं भारत में इतनी तो पॉपुलेशन नहीं होती बहुत सारे देशों में तो बहुत बड़ा काम हमारे हाथ पे था कि हम ये चेहरा बदल पाए ब्लाइंड वुमेन का देश में कोई शादी नहीं करता था ब्लाइंड लड़कियों से ब्लाइंड लड़के शादी नहीं करते थे बिकॉज़ पेरेंट्स को लगता था कि दो ब्लाइंड लोगों को कैसे हैंडल करेंगे घर में यू नो एक तो है मतलब वो भी उन्हें बोझ लगता था तो फिर एक और तो इंपॉसिबल सो वाज टेरिबल स्टेट ऑफ ब्लाइंड वुमेन अगर कोई लड़की ब्लाइंड हो जाती थी तो पेरेंट्स को लगता था दुनिया खत्म है हमारी भी और इसकी भी you know the grief will never finish so uh, we started with one student and then nine students in the hostel with the premise uh, that we have been donated is beautiful it's a bungalow in hoskas and cave but uh, there was not much built space so we had to kind of do a lot of renovations also and ngos don't have so much money you know so you have to be very limited in your expenditures and uh, we started with volunteers of the colony ke bahut erudite colony hai bahut padhe likhe log the to women aana shuru hui kaam karne ke liye lekin itni raw ladkiyan thi blind ladkiyan ki unhe lagta tha inko angrezi sikhaye personality grooming karaye iska koi fayda nahi hoga ye kya bol rahe hain to they lost all faith after some time they felt this is not going to end up anywhere and they left us so i was again left alone totally in the center to manage and i was losing it i didn't really know what to do but uh slowly uh, we had the first cyber cafe for the blind in north from microsoft i remember and then within that cyber cafe only we started some trainings also for the blind women then we started a small hostel where the girls could come and stay because i knew uh, from the research that jab tak unko rehne ki jagah nahi denge north india mein to khas kar माँ बाप बाहर नहीं आने देंगे तो दैट्स हाउ वी स्टार्टेड एंड स्लोली द गर्ल्स स्टार्टेड हैविंग फेथ इन अस दे स्टार्टेड गेटिंग टू नो अबाउट अस देन आई रिमेंबर आई वांटेड टू स्टार्ट गिविंग देम अ लाइफ ऑफ देयर ओन मैंने घरों में देखा था जब ये ब्लाइंड लड़की की साइटेड सिस्टर से सेम आदमी से शादी मैंने देखी तो 
ये भी देखा कि वो सारा दिन घर में कमरे में एक कमरे में अकेली कन्फाइंड बैठती है वो बहन और जीजा उसके काम पे जाते हैं खेतों पे जाते हैं अगर तो उसके लिए सुबह वो नाश्ता करा जाते होंगे उसके बाद जब तक वो शाम तक नहीं आ जाते वो उसी बिस्तर पे बैठी रहती थी बिकॉज ना उसको बाहर जाना आता था ना उसको अपने लिए चाय बनानी आती थी उसे कोई काम नहीं आता था तो वो टोटली निर्भर होती थी दूसरों के ऊपर कि वो आएंगे तो फिर वो खाना भी खाएंगी तो जिंदगी का कोई और आयाम उसके लिए खुला हुआ नहीं था इट वॉज एब्सोलूटली नोन लाइफ फॉर द ब्लाइंड सो द फर्स्ट थिंग वी स्टार्टेड वॉज स्टार्ट टू लर्न टू कुक फॉर सेल्फ एंड एट दैट टाइम इट वॉज सो इम प्रॉबेबल टू टीच अ ब्लाइंड गर्ल टू कुक फॉर हर सेल्फ ऑन द फायर यू नो सबसे बड़ा डर उनका यू नो अनोन का बट एज वी टॉट देम दे लर्न ऑल्सो तो पहली बार वो कुछ काम कर रहे थे इतना ईजी भी नहीं था बट स्लोली that is one main training which gave them confidence that they can become independent can you imagine i mean you know it, we take it for granted and um, then computer sciences and then we started uh, thinking of more vocations which will give them jobs so uh, employers would not be ready to take blind girls into jobs because unhe lagta tha aam ladki ko safety nahi de sakte hain hum तो ये ब्लाइंड लड़की है ये तो हम वी डोंट वांट टू टेक द रिस्क बट देयर वाज एन एक्सपोर्ट हाउस कॉल्ड बलून्स जो बहुत सारे डिसेबल लोगों को जॉब्स देता था तो हमने शुरू में क्योंकि अनएजुकेटेड लड़कियां ज्यादा आती थी हमारे पास ब्लाइंड तो हमने उन्हें हैंडीक्राफ्ट सिखाना शुरू किया था और फिर एक्सपोर्ट हाउस में पैकेजिंग के फंक्शंस में दे गेव देम जॉब्स एंड टिल डेट दैट्स द most number of employment for blind people till date in the garment export houses on packaging we had placed almost the first blind women in delhi on export houses because nobody would go and work in factories but after that the trend really caught up and we trained a lot of girls <coughs> along with that jo educated ladkiyan thi as i told you schooling kar li thi to uske aage nahi samajh aata tha so we started preparing them with computers and mobility training to go to college and then we pushed the colleges in delhi university to offer them more courses than just political science honors and history honors which was uh very very uh you know uh the political science honors and history honors were the only ones theoretical co- courses that they thought the blind could do yeah music kar lenge music honors this was the only understanding people had but we really started knocking their doors that uh, give them sociology courses give them social work there is there are so many courses you know which don't require lab experience it's just that the university thought who's going to teach them how are they going to study so i knew how children used to study in normal schools the blind children in nab and uh, we told them let let her bring her uh, recording device in the class and she'll record your lectures and we'll see how she can be given books and we would be preparing her for computers anyway so she could be reading ebooks perhaps you know on the computers so it caught up a lot of colleges started giving us time and space and miranda to opened a whole lab for computers for blind students you know miranda college still till date has the largest number of girls ip college dolatram stephens and i mean then we started sending girls to all sorts of colleges we sent them to lsr and miranda ip dolatram and uh, you name the college anywhere khalsa um, and i'm very happy that today delhi university has 1000 seats reserved for disabled students and at that time we really had to work hard the first batch of blind women going into the university was from my center the april to june batch used to be just for that so some things became signature and slowly you know we started feeling not everybody can is right for the packaging course there are students with all sorts of aptitudes so slowly we uh, then started computer training se humne call center ka training shuru kiya usme placement shuru kiya fir uh, massage uh, we felt that blind people world over are very good masseurs and uh, we had a training from japan in fact japan or china may uh, 
न्यूरो रिफ्लेक्सोलॉजिकल डिजॉर्डर्स की जितनी मसाजेस हैं स्पॉन्डिलाइटिस और सर्वाइकल माइग्रेन जहाँ भी नर्व्स में ब्लॉकेजेस होती है ब्लड प्रेशर वो सब मसाजेस ब्लाइंड ही लोग करते हैं चाइना और जापान में तो जापान यूनिवर्सिटी ने हमें अप्रोच किया था एंड वी अडॉप्टेड दैट ट्रेनिंग एंड इट्स अमेजिंग देन वी ऑल्सो हैव यू नो स्टार्टेड ट्रेनिंग अ लॉट ऑफ ब्लाइंड गर्ल्स फॉर अ लॉट ऑफ कोर्सेज इन हायर एजुकेशन बैंकिंग बहुत सारी लड़कियाँ बैंकिंग में जाती हैं और फिर धीरे धीरे खाना बनाना सिखाना शुरू किया था उसमें बहुत सारी लड़कियां बड़ी अच्छी भी हैं तो एक लड़की नेपाल से आई और उसने बोला कि आ, मैंने उसने नेपाल से हमें फोन किया कि मुझे पता लगा कि आप लोग खाना बनाना सिखाते हैं और मुझे ना आके कैफे खोलना है नेपाल में आई एम सिंगल मदर तो आप मुझे ट्रेन करें तब तक हमने अपनी लड़कियों को थोड़ा सा एक छोटा सा इन हाउस कैंटीन चलाना सिखाना शुरू किया था कि लेट्स सी इफ दिस गोज समवेयर बिकॉज हमारा एक मेजर काम था जॉब मैपिंग का हम अलग अलग इंडस्ट्रीज में जाके देखते थे किस तरह की जॉब्स अवेलेबल हो सकती हैं ब्लाइंड लोगों के लिए तो हमने होटल इंडस्ट्री में भी देखा और मैंने देखा होटल इंडस्ट्री में लोग बड़े डरते हैं कि नहीं नहीं हम ब्लाइंड लोगों को अवन नहीं छूने देंगे और एक्सीडेंट हो जाएगा उनकी सेफ्टी नहीं है टू चैलेंज मी अ लॉट कि अपने यहाँ मेरे सेंटर में पूरा कम्युनिटी कुकिंग है एवरी बडी हैज टू गिव फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स टू कुकिंग इट्स मैंडेटरी तो uh, क्यों नहीं कर सकती हैं तो एक छोटा कैंटीन शुरू किया और उसके बाद जब ये नेपाली लड़की ने बोला आई वांट टू ओपन अ कैफे तो इट पुश टास्क कि हमारे पास थोड़ी जगह है हमारे पास एक लॉन है उस प्रमाइस में बहुत सुंदर तो हमें सोचा कि वहाँ हम एक ब्लाइंड बेग शुरू करें Uh, जहाँ ब्लाइंड लड़कियाँ uh, उनको बेकिंग सिखाई जाए और फिर वो कस्टमर्स को हैंडलिंग भी शुरू करें सो दैट यू नो दे कैन मेक इट वोकेशन दैट्स हाउ ब्लाइंड बेक हैपन्ड विच जस्ट टू थ्री गर्ल्स एंड इट्स अमेजिंग माय सेल्फ आई फील कि कैसे आप यू कैन हैव द बेस्ट बर्गर्स इन द सेंटर एंड यू कैन हैव द बेस्ट पिज्जाज एंड बिस्किट्स एंड केक्स दर सो मेनी पीपल हु टेल एस कि ऐसा केक हमने नहीं खाया दे वेरी गुड एट वॉट दे डू and the trainers are amazing that they are able to have the patience to teach them then we also have another training called discovering hands which um, only the health fraternity right now knows the health care industry germany mein uh, dr frank karke ek doctor ne ek course shuru kiya jahan blind ladkiyon ko breast cancer ka chote se chota lump dhoondna sikhaya jata hai unke haathon ka jo सेंसिटिविटी है छूने का वो बहुत सूक्ष्म है इट्स इट्स वेरी सेंसिटिव बिकॉज दे दे लर्न फ्रॉम ब्रेल यू नो ऑल देर चाइल्ड हुड एंड ब्रेल इज द माई न्यूटेस्ट डॉट इफ यू हैव एवर सीन इट इट्स इट्स एक छः डॉट्स की लिपि है जिसमें एक सुई से आप एक सुई जितनी नोक है उससे आप डॉट करते हैं तो उसको पढ़ना सीखते हैं तो वो उतना छोटा सा डॉट पड़ती है वो सेंसिटिविटी आ जाती है और क्योंकि आंखों से नहीं देख पाते हैं तो ज्यादातर जो क्षमताएं हैं वो छूने की स्मेल करने की सुनने की वो ब्रश अप हो जाती हैं बहुत फोकस्ड तो वहाँ एक डॉक्टर को फील हुआ कि मैमोग्राफी हर औरत नहीं करा पाती है यू नो उसकी एक एज से शुरू हो सकता है वो पैंतालीस के ऊपर वर्ल्ड वाइड और यंग से यंग लड़कियों को ब्रेस्ट कैंसर हो रहे हैं तो कैसे ये होगा और उन्होंने फील किया कि डॉक्टर्स जो हैं उनको ये चेकअप करना चाहिए लेकिन वो फोकस नहीं रहता है पूरी ब्रेस्ट को चेक करने का एक साइटेड डॉक्टर का फोकस नहीं रहता है वो हाथ से कैसे ढूंढेंगे लेकिन उन्होंने ये सोचा कि जब हम मैं सेल्फ ब्रेस्ट एग्जामिनेशन हम सिखाते हैं हर औरत को कहते हैं करिए तो क्यों नहीं करती हैं औरतें अपना चेकअप खुद और ये फील किया उन्होंने कहते हैं मैं नहा रहा था और मैंने अपने आप को चेक करना शुरू किया और आंखें बंद हो जाती थी ऑटोमेटिकली जब मैं फोकस करने की कोशिश करता हूँ तो मेरी आंख बंद हो जाती है लेकिन पेशेंस नहीं आंखों को इतनी देर बंद करने की साइटेड लोगों को तो ही फेल्ट कि मैं ब्लाइंड लोगों के पास क्यों नहीं जाता हूँ जिनकी आंखें बंद है तो उन्होंने ब्लाइंड स्कूल में जर्मनी में शुरू किया इट वॉज अमेजिंग एंड देन इट हैज गॉन ऑन टू मैनी कंट्रीज एंड देन वी ऑल्सो ब्रॉड दैट ट्रेनिंग इन इंडिया वेर द ब्लाइंड गर्ल्स आर ट्रेन टू फाइंड द माइन्यूटेस्ट लम्प इन द ब्रेस्ट ऑफ अ वूमेन और वो फर्स्ट स्टेज कैंसर ढूंढ लेती है जो कि मशीनें नहीं ढूंढ पाती क्योंकि 
आप आते ही नहीं है डॉक्टर के पास फर्स्ट स्टेज में ना महसूस ही नहीं होता है तो और ये एक ऐसा चेकअप है ये हाथ का चेकअप है इसमें कोई रेडिएशन नहीं है कोई रेज नहीं है तो आप कभी भी उठ के आ सकते हैं चेकअप कराने के सो दैट इज एन अमेजिंग पैराडाइम शिफ्ट फॉर ब्लाइंड वुमेन कि वो मेडिकल इंडस्ट्री ज्वाइन कर सकती हैं और टेबल के उस तरफ जा सकती हैं टू गिव द सर्विस नाउ सो यस यू नो वी बिकेम पायलट रनर्स फॉर एन एस डी सी ऑल्सो एंड स्किल काउंसिल फॉर पी डब्ल्यू डीज टू रन दीज डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ कोर्सेज कोर्सेज फॉर ब्लाइंड पीपल अनफॉर्चुनेटली ब्लाइंड वुमेन के लिए ये है क्योंकि हम ब्लाइंड वुमेन का सेंटर चलाते हैं तो हम वुमेन पे फोकस करते हैं uh for the boys we do run that packaging training still and they still come from villages in great numbers and join the export houses and manufacturing industry but yeah for blind women we've been able to open a little more paradigms i have spoken so much thank you for letting me talk thank you so much actually you're doing your organization is doing tremendous work and this it is applauding that you're doing this from like a person knowing nothing like a blind person knowing nothing now they can earn two squares me they can run their own houses so that is amazing Absolutely. and it's not that oh, now easy. the blind women they get married easily thankfully yeah bahut gussa karte the blind men ko ki kyu nahi aap life partner dhoondte ho aap sighted escort kyu dhoond rahe ho to slowly they started coming to us to ask for trained girls who could run homes and who can also work and be good partners and Oh, I'm very proud of that fact. Yes. Yeah, and and the, like the best thing that I like here is that the women, like the blind women, are not just confined to one single profession. They can also pursue things that they really like. Or they they can run kitchens, they can bake, they can do packaging, and a lot of things. I mean, it's just that as normal people, we are given the benefit to choose our own profession, and I think it's likewise for them as well, just because of your. work your support Absolutely. and a motivation to them so i think that is well, the journey we hope that they are able to open more vocations you know char ya panch vocations in a world where sighted people the no, you know normal mainstream people have lakhs of vocations to choose from we are able to offer only four i feel that's a limitation of a human mind yeah but if we see from 0 to 4 that's a growth and obviously and obviously you're going to go like add all the professions that a normal person has to the list of blind people and blind women that's that's definitely a big go yeah you will i i'm guessing that will happen very very soon so thank you i think you covered all the things that we really wanted to talk there's just one one specific that i think that i want to ask There are a lot of issues in the world in India. Why did you specifically choose to work for this particular area? Like why blind and why women? बड़ा मुश्किल क्वेश्चन है ये. I would say life brought me to them. So okay. I, as I told you, I was a freelance market researcher at 24. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't want to go back full time to the market research because I already had that work in my hand and I loved doing it. I used to travel a lot, and traveling is a passion till date. So uh, I didn't know what to do, and I had done my post graduation diploma in uh, industrial relations and personnel management, and I was still kind of wondering, "Kya kare?" So one friend of mine took me to volunteer my time at National Association for the Blind, a school branch in Delhi, in Arkhipurum. That's the first time I was looking at blind people, you know. हमारे मन में जो इमेज रहती है ब्लाइंड लोगों की वो बड़ी पुअर बड़ी बेगर्स यू नो डिलेपिडेटेड तो मैं थोड़ा डर के गई थी मैं यहाँ क्या करूँगी आई डोंट नो हाउ एम आई गोन फील अबाउट इट बट वेन आई वेंट देर यू नो आई सो राइट स्मार्ट चिल्ड्रन गोइंग टू नॉर्मल मेन स्ट्रीम स्कूल मॉडर्न स्कूल सरदार पटेल सेंट मेरीज टेगोर इंटरनेशनल यू नेम इट एंड when i started volunteering uh, you would just sit down and read for a child or write for a child and they used to be so intelligent and while teaching them while helping them out with their studies i started rediscovering myself i felt they're so bright but there was another sad part that they would go to such plush schools but they would come back to a life of not so bright individuals i mean you know being an ngo they didn't have so much money so they had only 13 caretakers maids in the school 
to which the children would come back to. They would have a lot of good teachers to, you know, push their careers further. But uh, the caretakers were all uneducated and 150 children on 13 caretakers to cook for them, to take care of their daily needs, to uh, help the small children get up early in the morning, get ready, go to the school. It was too much. And there was not, everything was not nice, you know, in that bringing up. Because ultimately, back from the teachers, they would be with these caretakers to take care of them. And I saw that that kind of bringing up is not what I had gone through. I had a very strict father who wanted me to be very independent. You know, at that time, I used to resent it that he doesn't take care of me like a father, like every girl's father who would be protective and all. Uh, and now I realize that, oh, God, he was God sent. I mean, he made me so independent. But... I could not see independent children in front of me in those terms. And I didn't like that. I felt when we were growing adolescent, our parents would leave some responsibilities on us. Why would these children be not taught responsibility? So we, I, I wanted to kind of start changing that norm. And I joined their hostel as a student welfare dean at that time at 24 or 25 to change the lifestyle of these blind children. And I remember everybody in my family or in that school used to feel, what are you doing here? This is not your arena. This is not where well-educated girls, you know, spend their growing up years and career years. In. But I was sure because this is what I wanted to do. It, it gave me a sense of beauty in life, belonging, absolutely. This is where I'm required. Offices, I was doing all the work. I would just be another employee in any office, you know. But this is where I was required. And I, it was totally selfish because I guess I felt like, yes, life needed me. And um, when I started working with those children, started giving them hospital responsibilities, start keeping the place clean yourself, why don't you offer your time to the younger children to, you know, or help them with their, their studies and their uh, grooming? The elder children, they just loved doing it. They all started taking up, lapping up that responsibility. And and in two, three years, I think we changed the whole face of the hostel. That's what kept me there. It was beautiful. Believe me, no other job is so well paid. Yes, money you don't earn in, in these in these jobs, but how much exposure and how much life importance you gain, and it's a journey in its own self. It's an experience. So, yes, you have to be prepared that you're not going to be earning as well as the other uh, corporate friends you might corporate. have. Yeah, but I did pave a career for many and, and for myself. Then the center happened, and now there are so many policies that we pushed with the government and and um, we are holding a festival on 16th and 17th. It's an annual festival we hold called Ujwala. That's a blind woman's world of light. Where all the communities where we teach handicraft, whatever they make, we design it for them. And they make such amazing stuff. It all comes onto the exhibition and sale. And we have a blind chess player and we have a blind potter and we have games which blindfold yourself and come and play. We're just trying to tell the world blindness is not something to sympathize with. Don't come here and say, oh, I'm more fortunate that I have my eyes. No. Their life is a much tougher game. It's a difficult challenge. Are you ready for it? Is anybody ready for it? You know, uh, they have been able to brush their other senses. How many of us have been able to do that? We're so dependent on our eyes, so dependent on our eyes for everything. So it's not that you have the fortune of the eyes with you. It's just that you're too dependent on the eyes. Me too. I mean, everybody who's sighted. And we forget that we have a sense of smell and we have a sense of touch and we have a sense of hearing. And life has given all that for a purpose. So it's just that we have made the world for the disabled people a lot more challenging because we have made the world for a very limited fragment of society. We have not thought of everybody. So... That's it's a creative challenge, and um, I loved the creativity, I guess. So, I think it was your creativity and the sure in you that uh, attracted you to this very particular field. 
and you're doing amazing work like as you did hats off to you thank and you. i wish you all the best and i also thank wish you all the best for the uh, coming exhibition like thank uh, you so uh, exhibition your festival sorry the festival that you have on 16th and 17th so everybody who is in delhi just drop by and have a look at what please the do. other side of the world looks like please do come to l25 horse cars and clave on 16th and 17th and in your life go and volunteer your time to something that's purposeful it will leave you with a great self esteem it will also leave you with something to look forward to every day yeah god so here i would like to end this conversation thank you so much ma'am for joining today and thank sharing you. your beautiful journey and all the great work that you're doing thank you so much for joining thank you thank you so much really thank you bye 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 bye